Operation Solomon is over, but the Odyssey continues. There are still Jews left in Ethiopia, living in remote villages, cut off from their people. Tekatai, Amharic, for it continues. Beyond these hills is Quora, a region in northern Ethiopia near the Sudan border. An entire Jewish population of more than 2,000 live within these hills. Secluded, they can only be reached by foot. The Jews of Quora have always dreamed of Jerusalem. Until very recently, Quora was under rebel control, its borders sealed. Now that they're able, a mass exodus has started as Jews of this area begin a long trek on foot to the city of their dreams. Unknown hardships and dangers face them, but they are determined to continue. This is the last harvest for these villagers. This is how the Jews here have been living for over 2,000 years. Integrated and a part of the local culture, but strictly abiding by the laws of their Jewish faith. Rushing to destiny. Jewish agency emissary Zimna Baharani, the first official Jewish contact for these travelers. Zimna was born in these hills and left Ethiopia for Israel 40 years ago. As a young man, he returned to his village and has since never stopped on his mission to bring his people back home. We've been walking for three weeks, 200 miles. One woman got sick, another gave birth. In this outpost, miles from nowhere, a local school has been turned into a registration center and shelter. Most have arrived tired, some ill. Their quiet dignity belies the hardships they've endured. Zimna must act as counselor and doctor with as little as an aspirin. These people were very comfortable. They had land and livestock, why uproot, what drives them? Zionism, Jerusalem, it's in their blood. The mother who gave birth on the trip sways to calm her newborn child. Zimna begins to cross-check a list of names to determine who has arrived and who is yet to come. Israel is still far away, but it is starting to become a reality. The Jews of Quora keep to themselves the secrets of their journey. They will stay the night and maybe the next before they begin the second leg of their odyssey, 200 miles over rough terrain by truck to Teda, the next transit stop. After a 10-hour ride, they finally arrive. The grounds are filled with those who left Quora earlier. There are cries of joy and relief as family members and friends reunite. The transit point is run by the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee. Veteran Jewish agency worker Benny Harrell receives the new arrivals. Benny divides his time between his work in Teda and overseeing an absorption center in Ashkelon. He works with Dr. Rick Hodes of the JDC. Dr. Hodes is from New Jersey and has been living in Ethiopia for several years. He greets his new patients of all ages in fluent Amharic. It's new. Oh, we have uh, a thousand Jews, we have a clinic, we have a...
<laughs> a clinic open 24 hours a day with one or two doctors full time. We have two or three inpatient hospital beds. And uh, we take care of these guys all the time. Has a lot of between the southern Jews? Yeah, there's a fair amount of malaria. Um, at least five, if not ten, malaria cases a day. A lot of kids have huge spleens. A lot of skin diseases. Uh, Thirty to forty percent have scabies when they get off the when they get off the, the trucks when they arrive. Um, some vitamin A deficiency. Some malnutrition. Case Tayahen in a hearing is the spiritual leader of Quara. Despite his eighty years, he also made the journey on foot. Today is Friday. As the youngsters look on, he unwraps his most valuable possession. He's carried it with him all the way from Quora. His Bible, the Tanakh. <laughs> In a somewhat different tradition, Dr. Hodes leads Shabbat services by his clinic. Not everyone understands his words or are quite sure what to do. But the spirit of Shabbat prevails, and sometimes the strongest prayers are silent. Which tradition is it? It's uh, in this the Jersey tradition. Or... <laughs> this is Ashkenaz. I'm I'm Safari, but this is Ashkenaz. You're Safari? Yeah, you How think come? I'm Vispas? <laughs> Four hundred miles away from Teda to the Israeli embassy compound in Addis Ababa. During Operation Solomon, this courtyard was packed with over fourteen thousand people waiting to leave for Israel. Now the arrivals are staggered according to the pace of immigration. This avoids any overcrowding and allows the soon-to-be new Olim time to prepare and adjust. Plastic toys and games are new adventures waiting to be learned. Baharani, Zimna's American-born wife, helps to complete the ongoing registration process with its inevitable paperwork. Um, we're preparing uh, documentation for Israel, for his uh, identity card in Israel. So we have to get the correct elements, his correct name, his father's name, his grandfather's name, his mother's name, uh, his marital status, uh, his age and his occupation. The last stage of a journey which began on foot in the faraway hills of northern Ethiopia ends with a flight through the skies. It's a quantum leap from Quara to modern day Israel. Airplanes and earphones are only a first taste of the new life that beckons beyond the horizon. the mesmerizing lights of the Israeli coast. With these first steps in their new country, another journey begins. Awaiting are temporary shelters, the shock of a different culture, and starting a new life.
But the task has not ended. Takatai. It continues. As long as there is a Jewish child in Ethiopia. Rick Hodes, Benny Harrell, and Zimna Baharani will be there too.